the depressing truth behind man versus wild i hope it's not fake dude i love bear grills dude i grew up watching him and then a bunch of random shit on the military channel this is when i was living with a bunch of white people okay let's watch you didn't know it was this fake that comment was posted to an early expose of man vs wild season one episode five while bear grills other survival missions have featured everything from rented horses to volcanic landscapes created by smoke machines holy shit go over every available example where Bear Grylls might not have been telling the truth, including multiple responses from the man himself, so you can come to your own conclusion about whether or not the show was real. A TV survivalist caught cutting corners. This was the first example of Bear Grylls being called out for fakery, and it oh. came on the 24th of July 2007, just four days after the end of the first season. The article was written after Mark Weinert, one of the show's consultants, came forward to talk about the ways in which the first season was staged. Mark began by explaining- What a hater, bro. Do we not have contracts to shut people up? Why is he just exposing Bear Grylls like that, dude? I love Bear Grylls. In Nevada mountains, Grills was seen supposedly sleeping under a rock beside a small life saving fire. On this little overhang here, here's all I've really got now. Our shelter for the night. It's not very nice. Yet, in all actuality, Grills instead spent each night at the Pines Resort in Bass Lake. Okay. Which was advertised as a no way. No way. I hate him. He don't love me. He lied to me for real. Why? At the Pines Resort in Bass Lake, which was advertised as a cozy getaway for families and is a luxurious hotel with its own spa on a lake, as well as television, stone fireplaces, hot tubs, and internet access. However, this isn't the only part of the episode which has since been exposed as fake. Only a few minutes after waking from the campsite, which he apparently didn't even sleep at, Grills runs into a group of wild Mustang before talking about how unusual it was to see them out in the wild. A chance to use an old Native American mode of transport comes my way. And this is such a privilege to see that probably loose horses that have broken free maybe from a ranch he spends the next couple of minutes gaining the trust of the wild horses before trying to jump onto one without success which is interesting as according to a reddit post bear grills breaking a wild mustang was actually a choreographed scene shot with a domesticated horse from a nearby ranch the What's real anymore, bro? All men do is lie and cheat. Post included a video which has sadly now been deleted, yet there are comments on other websites to back up the claim, such as, the wild horses in the American West are uncombed skittish wild creatures with scrapes and cockle burrs, not the gentle manicured saddle horse which was seen in that episode, alongside YouTube comments such as, I grew up near Reno, Nevada, and spent a lot of time watching wild horses. The proof that he never roped a wild horse, he's still alive. On top of this, Mark Weiner then explain that season one episode nine in which grills is supposedly surviving on a scarce desert island was actually filmed off the coast of hawaii where grills spent his evenings in a motel during the same episode grills can be seen making a bamboo raft on the beach which even included a fishnet sail yet this was also debunked after wino explained he actually led a team of builders to construct the raft it was then taken apart so that grills could be shown building it on camera however it was season one episode five on mount kilauea that was the most suspicious of them all. At the beginning of the episode, Grills was supposedly walking on an active volcano shown by sulfur dioxide gas which was steaming from the surface. Sulfur dioxide gas forms in volcanoes and Whoa. here it's really thick. Look at this, you can actually see the sulfur dioxide here seeping out of these vents. However, after the episode went live, one of the show's safety instructors explained to the Sunday Times that the white clouds of poisonous sulfur dioxide that billowed around the former SAS Explorer were in fact harmless vapor created by smoke machines. And according to insiders, the red glow of the molten magma which he warned could incinerate him in seconds was supplemented by burning hot coals brought in by members of the production team. Sulfur dioxide fumes are colorless and you can't see it, so smoke generators were used off screen to make the existing fumes seem visible. Oh, shit. Later in the episode, Grills talks about being far from civilization before explaining that crossing the terrain was dangerous due to lava cracks in the ground. Crossing these fragile fissures can be dangerous, but there is a way to do it. Sometimes you get these, these lava bridges that cross them over, but you've got to be really, really careful crossing these just because you don't know what's solid and what's hollow underneath. Oh, shit. 
Don't die, Bear Grylls, I love you. However, when a YouTuber called Volcano Chaser uploaded a video titled Rayman vs. Wild Bear Grylls is a phony, this segment was also debunked. Uh the video showed that just behind the camera, the lava crack came to an end and could have simply been walked around, uh which became even worse after it was shown that Grylls was not far from civilization and was rather right next to a major highway. I hate what you, Bear Grylls! Take. The video I hate you! Why you lie to me? I love you! The description exposed other parts of the episode by stating most of the scenes in the show don't exist in the area he was supposed to be in. Avocado trees, lava tube, tropical forest, fissures, and landing site are all in different parts of the island and separated by up to 50 miles. I've hiked this area hundreds of times. These fissures are unique to a small area on the summit and are a very popular tourist viewing area. They're only a few hundred feet long and easy to go around. Only the phony bear seems to have trouble crossing them. The fissures are located next to the park area where wow. cars can be seen on the crater rim drive shown on the clip although there was still more trickery that wasn't being made obvious to the audience survival expert Nick Vrooman's worked with Bear Grylls on season 1 episode 13 so did he actually drink his pee what if he faked everything except drinking his, his own pee in the Australian Outback, after which Nick stated that even the script itself was pre-planned. He'd expand on this by stating everything you see in the show is set up. I built him shelters and found him snakes to eat. On the show broadcast to Europe and the US, you see him catch a snake, kill it and eat it. But it was two snakes, a roadkill that I found which he was shown beating on the head and eating, and then a live olive python that a wildlife carer had been rehabilitating, which was followed by Vroomans oh. also exposing the segment where Grills was almost attacked by a crocodile, stating the whole crew was petrified of the crocodiles. Bear didn't want to get anywhere near the water, so he filmed a setup of him like he was near a crocodile when he was actually a safe distance away. I was a bit miffed when I saw the finished show. As a result of the media ripping each episode to shreds, Bear Grylls was given a chance to respond to the controversy during a live talk show. Ooh. And then we heard uh, somebody complaining that they said, no, no, he's he's down the road at the Motel 6. He's <laughs> he's not really out there surviving. The way we film these things is over over six days. And, um, and when I'm filming the live night stuff out, I'm out whether, you know, it's in a camel carcass or up a tree. Mm -hmm. And then when we're not filming Lucky. the night stuff, I'll stay with the crew, you know, wherever that is, whether it's in a you know, tented camp area in the Sahara or a jungle lodge, you know, in a rainforest or wherever. Grills would then issue a public apology stating, wow. if people felt misled on how the first series was represented, I'm really sorry for that. He added, I'm the person that takes the rap for these things, even though I'm not always involved in the editing side of it, which is followed by the show promising to be 100% transparent going into the future. To cover themselves, really? the second season opened with a disclaimer, however, it's not like this did anything to convince viewers of the show's authenticity. If I had to choose one person to be stranded on a desert island with, it would be Bear Grylls. That way he would have his crew with him and they'll probably pay for us to stay in a nice hotel or something, <laughs> which became even worse after the show was exposed for a different stunt. During the episode in the African Savannah, Grylls is shown squeezing water out of elephant dung. Ew, ew. I hope this is fake. In Savannah, Grylls is shown squeezing water out of elephant dung, which by itself didn't seem all that troublesome. However, when Canadian survival expert Les Stroud, host of the show Survivor Man responded to the episode in a Reddit AMA. He debunked the strategy by stating, many of the actual survival skills taught are bogus. It's not possible to squeeze drinkable water out of elephant dung. Well, it is if your cameraman has soaked it with bottled water. I would even go so far as to say that some of the skills if followed and attempted in a real survival situation could result in worsening the situation. Bro, imagine someone watches Bear Grylls and then just ends up somehow stranded on a safari. And the only thing they have in front of them is elephant shit. That is so misleading, bro. What if that was me? I'm like, I watch Bear Grylls. I'm going to survive. And I, I just see elephant shit. And I run over. I'm like, give me this. I hate it here. With this comment coming alongside a few instances of Les Stroud dissing Man vs. Wild for its lack of authenticity. I was wondering if you've ever had the opportunity to meet Bear Grylls. I haven't because I'm out overnight and there's nobody else out there. What are your thoughts on Bear Grylls? <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to learn about archaeology, would you get it from Harrison Ford? A lot of fresh water around here. It's a good thing too. Otherwise, I'd be reduced to uh, probably having to drink my own pee. <laughs> yeah, right. There are YouTube videos <laughs> as well as full-blown websites dedicated to the poor advice that Bear Grylls is given, with many stating 
saying that this constitutes fakery, while others have made the point that Grills was simply showing survival techniques and it therefore didn't matter if the shots were set up or not. It's a show to teach you how to survive certain scenarios. To have every survival stunt to be real every single episode would be both dangerous and illogical. He teaches survival techniques. It's not it's even survival. Like what serve in what fucking survival book are you finding or drinking elephant sh there's no way, bro. That doesn't even sound logical, bro. He's a phony. Obviously irrelevant if he's really facing those perils or not. The point is it's entertaining and informative. He was teaching people how to survive if they were in that situation as if. He's not risking his life for a freaking TV show. Whether or not setting up the shots constitutes fakery That's is so up crazy. to debate. However, a YouTuber by the name of Lo The Show seems convinced that even when set up, a different Bear grill stunt is completely impossible eating a snake eat with the guts and skin on you can eat them straight like this oh Not possible. Although in other episodes, Bear Grylls has shown himself eating snakes in their entirety. Damn. So I wouldn't call the video by Low the Show all that much of a debunk. However, if we want slightly better evidence. Ew! What the f Yo, get this crazy ass white boy to fuck up out of here, bro. Evidence. We have to look at a video posted by Justin Wallace titled Climb a Cringe Bear Grylls Confirmed Top Roper. Justin, who's clearly an avid climber, spends the video criticizing an advertisement in which Bear Grylls is climbing a difficult route in Utah. Grills is shown to be using all the wrong gear. Guess we're using the Mountaineer's coil, which you don't really do, especially when you're track climbing in Moab because it just kinks up your rope. Sorry, bud, but a single wire gate on your harness isn't gonna do much for you. Tying all the wrong knots. What the hell knot is that? Kind of looks like a bowlin, but not really. And even climbing the- oh, Shut the f up, bro. F you. Go f yourself. Don't talk about bear girls like that, my king. He's a phony wall incorrectly. I don't even see his last piece. He's like 40 feet run out right there. You're gonna die, man. Oh, and there's so many good placements too. What is he doing? There's no way he is holding his body weight with that one hand in that crack right there. And his two feet are just sticking out on nothing. His crew is definitely pulling his fat up there on a three to one. There's no way he's climbing that. The original rock climbing video has a dislike ratio of almost 75% Damn. and features comments such as, gotta give him credit for really committing to the BS. Interesting skills he has in climbing. This is just ridiculous. Wow, it could be impressive if it was not fake. As a climber, it's obvious that the heli dropped him at the top and he made some shots rappelling down. I used to like him, disappointing. You could make the argument that Grills gets a pass given it was filmed for an advertisement, but does he get a pass for an article titled Bear Grill Show Accused of Fakery Again uh -oh. after the island's ordinary men exposed as trained professionals? Uh -oh. According to the article, the island by Bear Grylls introduced what was supposed to be 13 ordinary men are about to be abandoned on a Pacific island with just the clothes they stand up in and a few tools. But there was no mention that Rupert Smith had worked in war zones in extreme environments, including alongside Grylls as director of Channel 4's Escape to the Legion. Similarly, there was no no introduction to cameraman Dan Etheridge, who also worked with Grills on Discovery Channel's Man vs. Wild. Kiff McManus, a sound recordist with 10 years experience in some of the world's most dangerous places, also failed to get a mention. Mm. The article also revealed that two Cayman crocodiles had been manually released onto the island, oh, wow. and that the rare source of fresh drinking water found by those on the show was actually a rubber line pool set up by the production crew. Channel 4 responded to the featuring of trained professionals by stating, it clearly states in the program voiceover, the train crew are part of the experiment, living under the exact same conditions as the other men. Like all of the men on the island, their professions are captioned on screen and their backgrounds are discussed. Biographies are also on the Channel 4 website, before going on to address the crocodiles and drinking water by stating, we had to ensure the island's only water supply, a muddy pool, would last through filming in the dry season, and that there was enough native animals and native vegetation that could sustain the men for 28 days, as long as they had the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. I mean, that's kind of understandable, bro. What are you going to do? Drop off 10 guys on a deserted island? I guess that's the whole premise of the show, but still, it's like, bro, I don't know. Ah, five Bear Grylls. I'm sad and hurt and distraught. 